this is Mrs. Smekins, and in this lesson series, we're not just reading one text, we're juggling multiple texts. We're looking at how readers compare two texts or two topics. In the last lesson, we looked particularly at two fictional texts and the idea that we're going to still use this T chart and read all of text A and collect details about each of the story elements, then read all of text B for the same story elements, collecting specific details, then read across each row, each story element, and we're looking for similarities, not just differences. Well, we also in the last lesson kind of reintroduced the idea that readers don't just read and have thoughts. They also have to be able to explain them, either orally in discussions or in writing. And that this T-chart really starts to help us see organization, but also remember the use of transition words. We practice how to take details from either side of the T-chart and start to weave them together with however, although, instead, rather, and also words like similar, um, uh, while this does this, so does that. Uh, so we were really looking at just starting to play with putting details we gathered as a reader together into explanatory sentences. Okay, I want to take that idea to the next level. And I want to say, okay, it's time to write it down, people. It's time to actually write sentences. And, and so we need to kind of move to this idea of paragraph writing, right? And what do we know about paragraphs? We know paragraphs have topic sentences, and supporting details, right? And, and there are multiple sentences. Okay, well, again, this is the advantage to the T-chart over the Venn diagram. This didn't give us any organization and it's really not gonna be helpful when it's time to start writing. Because again, what's my order? It's just, it's just all there. I, I don't, you're gonna just start writing individual sentences about each sticky note and it's, there's no organization. It's not developed. It's not logical by any means. It's just haphazard, get her done kind of ready. All right. So we're, we're done with the Venn. I think I've convinced you. We're done with the Venn. And so I'm going to remove the Venn, or actually, I'll just cover it up because we need a place to write out our thinking. And we're going to use our knowledge of T chart organization to capture our thinking. Okay. And that's kind of the big piece in this, is that the T-chart isn't just for the reader as a method of note-taking. No, this is a pre-write. The same notes you took to do the comparative thinking now become the notes you use to write from, and the organization is built in. It's automatically there because of the categories. What I want you to understand is that each row will become a paragraph. Yeah. I mean, this is a no brainer. This is a paragraph and this is now they are body paragraphs because obviously you first need an introductory paragraph where you just introduce the two texts that you read that you're going to compare, introduce the authors, introduce their genres, just introduce the text. We need an introductory paragraph for that. But do you see that this is a body paragraph and then this is a body paragraph and every other story element is a body paragraph? Yeah, because each row on a T-chart has built in organization already. It tells you what your body paragraphs will be about category and the supporting details within them. Yeah. What's a paragraph again? A paragraph is a topic sentence plus supporting details. Okay, now let's take this idea, okay? And let's let's look on the screen. So if we're we're supposed to write a paragraph per row and every paragraph has a topic sentence supporting details, where does that come from? Okay, here we go. So this is what's on your T-chart, right? Details for topic A or text A, details for text B, category in the middle. So the category could be main characters, okay? Pick a story element. Okay, watch this. It's time to write the topic sentence, right? Where does it come from? The category. The category. 
What are all of the supporting sentences about? For this paragraph, all of the supporting details are about this story element. So the very first sentence of a body paragraph will be you introducing the category because the category is what the whole paragraph is about. Yeah, so turn that word or phrase into a sentence. There's your topic sentence. And then, as we did in the last lesson, you're going to start to look across the row, detail by detail. And you're going to grab the details and your supporting detail sentences are going to use those transition words. Similar, like, so is, however, rather, instead. And you're going to make sure that as you're generating supporting detail sentences, using details from both texts, that the supporting sentences don't just talk about each text individually for that story element, the differences, but also how that category, that story element is similar in both texts. So now you're, you're using everything that you used as a reader for note-taking to now be your pre-write. This is a no-brainer. This is another reason to get rid of the Venn. That, that didn't help us in the writing process. It maybe helped us in the collection reader note-taking process, but it's a hodgepodge mess when it's time to write. This sucker is screaming. Let's write paragraphs, people. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah. So a paragraph is nothing more than a topic sentence plus supporting or related details. Well, there's your topic sentence. Bam. Turn it into a sentence. And here are all of your supporting details. That plus that equals a paragraph. Therefore, every row is a body paragraph. All right. Let's see it in action. Let's see it in action and, and let's use what we uh, have already done in terms of work um, from Wizard of Oz and Three Picks, okay? Because I really just want to emphasize in this lesson the, the writing. How do you articulate all of this already done thinking in writing? Okay, so using previous thinking, let's, let, me, let me show you how this would work. Okay, so I, I look row by row and I'm going to write a single body paragraph, okay? And the focus of this body paragraph is the category. And the category is main characters. Okay, so now I could just start this paragraph by saying something very broad, but I got to use the word main characters because that's the category and the category has to be named in the topic sentence. Okay, so I could use a real broad and generic something and say nothing more than um, the, the main characters... In, I'm just going to abbreviate, okay? The Wizard of Oz and um, the Three Little Pigs are quite different. Okay, so let me let me pause right, right here and just show you that the category is main characters. And I said it in the first sentence. Why? Because the first sentence is the topic sentence, right? for the paragraph that will now follow. Okay, so I've opened up the door to them being different. Remember, I now want to give some specific details across the row, similarities and differences, but I already started this paragraph saying they're quite different. So it makes sense that my first detail I tell you is how they're different. Let me give you an example of how they're, let me be specific. And remember, using some of those transition words will be important as well. So I could start off with something like, um, are, are quite different. Um, oh, let's see, if I kind of zoom back in and I talk about, um, I'll talk about their um, character traits first. Um, Dorothy, okay, in The Wizard of Oz, um, uh, seems to be kind and gentle to all she meets, okay, along the Yelbert Road or whatever, okay? Now, 
I, I want to now show a difference, right? Because I've opened the door to difference. Okay, Dorothy seems to be kind and gentle to all she needs. Okay, so now I want to say something about the, the pigs, or at least the first two, maybe being lazy. Okay, but I need a transition word to alert the reader. I'm showing you a difference. And so I need to use one of these down here. Like, however, pigs one and two are different in that. Okay. However, pigs one and two are um, lazy and rush through their and rush through their work. Okay. Now I could point out another difference. Okay. Dorothy spends the bulk of her time on the yellow brick road while the pigs are building houses. So I could point that out as another difference. Uh, do you see how the more bullets you have, the more details you have, the longer that your paragraph will be? And isn't that what teachers are always wanting? More supporting details, explain your thinking, give more examples, write more sentences. There you go. This is why we don't rush the initial reading and collecting of details and comparative thinking after reading, because all of that is fodder to help us now with a much stronger, more developed product. OK, but let me go ahead and switch gears now and do some similarities. OK, so I'm constantly rereading what I've already generated. So here we go. The main characters in The Wizard of Oz and Three Pigs are quite different. Dorothy seems to be kind and gentle to all she meets. However, pigs one and two are lazy and rush through their work. Um, now I, I might want to say something again about how they're similar and I'm noticing some of their similarities are, um, they feel anxious and scared in their unique situations, um, or the cardio, the fact that they're both doing lots of exercise and cardio. Uh, so, um, a transition, something like despite, uh, these, uh, I could say differences, okay, or unique qualities, uh, they do have some common uh, commonalities, okay? And so now I want to introduce the idea that they're common, and, and I'm going to play off of the idea of the exercising and the cardio. Despite these differences, they do have uh, some commonalities. Um, the characters, now I can say um, Dorothy and the pigs, okay? After a while though, you wanna come up with synonyms. You don't wanna keep saying Dorothy, 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 the pigs, the pig. You could say the characters, you could say um, the animals if you're referencing the pigs, you know what I mean? So just synonyms are help with your sentence structure and some sentence variety. Um, okay, the characters in both texts um, are, I'm thinking of exercising, um, uh, uh, exhibiting, ooh, that's a good word, exhibiting um, energy through exercise. Okay, now this is where I would say give a specific for each. We've showed that they're both doing this, um, but now tell me how each of them is doing this. So uh, I'll just do D for Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy is walking and the pigs are building. Okay, you see how we're doing this? Do you see how the category becomes the topic sentence and then you just go across and you start pulling on some similarities and some differences? Okay, now wait a minute, I wanna do one more thing before I have you try this with me. I want us to look at not just the overall structure, Topic sentence supporting details and supporting details have transition words, right? Like quite different, however, despite, I think I use both a couple times, right? And so we need those kinds of transition words and that's good. Transitioning between similarities and differences. But what I want you to also see is that I don't throw all the details about the character for Wizard of Oz and then all the details about the Three Little Pigs. Because if you're going to just do all of one and then all about the other, you might as well write two separate informative pieces. This is a comparison, meaning you should actually weave reference to Dorothy 
and the pigs among all of the senses. And I can practice or I can, I can prove this by using colored markers. So if Wizard of Oz is red, Dorothy, all references to the, the characters in Wizard of Oz are red. I'm just going to kind of box that. Okay, I got Wizard of Oz referenced here. I've got Dorothy here. Okay, and she meets, that's Dorothy. However, the pigs, that's not Dorothy, despite that they have some commonality, the characters in both texts. Okay, so that's going to be Dorothy. Here's Dorothy is walking. Okay, so that was all Wizard of Oz. Now, let me go back and do all references to the pigs or the three pigs story. Look, three pigs, right? And however, pigs one and two, that comes from the three pigs. Uh, have some of the characters in both, that's pigs and Dorothy, right? And then here, the pigs. My point is, do you see how I go between red and blue, red and blue, red and blue? That's what readers are gonna do. This is true comparative thinking when you're weaving those details together. And you keep it logical with transition words. So we know if what you're about to say is a similarity or a difference. And we use a topic sentence, the category, to keep all this organized. You seeing it? All right. Tell me with the next one. I'm going to switch the screen and you're going to look at the plot summary details. Okay. And I'll let you look at it full screen here in just a minute because I want you to be thinking. Here's, here's my first question. How would you write the first sentence to this next body paragraph? Knowing that the category is the topic sentence, how would you write the first sentence? What, how would you say it? Okay. And so you be thinking about your sentence while I change the, the chart paper so that we can then capture it and, and write it out together. Okay. How would you say this first sentence? Okay, what are we thinking? We know we want to use the word plot, right? Or summary, okay? Okay, so this is a new body paragraph, so we would naturally indent, right? Okay, assuming we had an intro, okay? And the paragraph I just wrote, that was a body paragraph. Now we're on to our, our third paragraph, our second body paragraph. Okay, so we want to say something about the plot. What about the plots? Okay, we could say the plots are very different, yes, which I think we would expect, right? You compare two different stories, you expect the plots to be different. And, and you can absolutely say that, but do you see how that's going to get robotic after a while? The characters are quite different. The plots are different too. The themes are very different. I mean, after a while, are all of your topic sentences starting? To, well, let's, let's do something. Let's reference the plot, literally use that word in the first sentence, but what is something that they have in common? Okay, we could talk about the goal or the quest. We could kick right off with that. So it's kind of like you do a topic sentence and go right into some of your specific details of support. But let me, let me throw out this idea. What about um, the plot of both stories centers on home. You see how that's, it's still pretty broad. The plot of both stories center on home or plots, I guess, plural, right? The plots of both stories center on home. Okay, so now let's, let's, Name some of the differences between the Wizard of Oz getting home, Dorothy getting home, and, and the three pigs in their homes. So how, how, let's do the wizard first. Let's do Dorothy. How would you say that? Okay, Dorothy is trying to get home. Doesn't have to be hard, you guys. Dorothy is trying to get back home. Okay, now, wait, 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 wait. transition because you're about to give me a difference. What about the pigs? They're not trying to get back home. What are they trying to do? And how would you say it? Pick a, pick a transition word. Okay, you could say however, although, okay. Although the pigs are building homes, are trying to maintain their homes, something like that. Are building their homes. Okay, good. So we have a difference, okay? That's a difference. I mean, we, we threw out home as a topic sentence, the plots, okay? That's my topic sentence. 
And so I've, I've given a difference. Let's do another difference here. What's another difference between them? Okay, look here. She, she meets people along the way. Okay. And are, are the pigs meeting anybody? No. What are they doing? They're trying to avoid the wolf. Okay. So how could you say that? Okay. You could start with Dorothy again, but look, you just start I constantly reread. The plots of both stories center on home. Dorothy is trying to get back home, although the pigs are building their homes. A second difference. Don't just start off with Dorothy again. A second uh, difference is that Dorothy meets several characters along the way. But what about the characters in, in The Three Pigs? Do we meet new ones along the way? No, we have them all right away, don't we? All right away. But The Three Pigs names all its characters um, at the beginning. Okay, so that's a difference. Okay, it's, it's plot, but it's characterization too. You're right. Okay, all right, we got to get a similarity here. Well, let's play off of something about, uh, about the gusts of wind. Let's play off of that. Okay, and let's not just go into, we, we have Dorothy's trying to get home. Pigs are building their homes. The second difference is, okay, now we're about to give a similarity. H how would you say that? How about... While a tornado is the wind, while a tornado is the wind element in the Wizard of Oz, what similarly, what? Wind plays a role. Okay, good. Similarly, wind plays a role in what? How do we get wind? From the wolf blowing. Good. Okay, in the huffing and puffing of the wolf. Huffing and puffing of the big bad wolf in the three picks. Okay, I'm just abbreviating, but you see where I'm going here. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got a topic sentence, right? All of this is about plot, right? Good. And we use transition words like, let's find some of these, okay? A second difference, but similarly, right? Although we're using transition words. Good. So I know I have some logical organization, but now I really want to test that I not only did similarities and differences, but I wove information about the two different texts together. And so remember, Dorothy and Wizard of Oz is all things red. So here we go. Dorothy and Dorothy and Tornado is Dorothy. Wizard of Oz is Dorothy. Good. All right, now I'm gonna switch. Three pigs, all things blue. All right, we have the pigs are here. All right, we have the three pigs are here. We have the wind coming from the big bad wolf here. We did it. So this notion of not only reading to discover comparative thinking, but then writing that thinking, that's what we're doing in this lesson, is actually putting it into body paragraphs. And the more details you have, the longer, the more developed that category, that story element will be. All right, if you were in Mrs. Smekin's class, we would use the information you gathered from the previous lesson about the carpet fitter compared to American Pepper. And you made a teacher, all right? Use your teacher. If you didn't do that and you need a T-chart, you can use mine. This was my initial text A, text B T-chart, and then I really looked for comparisons and added in some things. But what I want you to do is now write four separate body 
paragraphs. I don't need an intro. I don't need a conclusion. You're not writing an essay where the paragraphs have to transition. I didn't teach you that. We just did separate isolated body paragraphs. So what I want you to do is write me a main character body paragraph and a main setting body. I want each of those. And you don't need to give me a label to tell me which paragraph is what because you're going to give me a topic sentence. And that's how I'm going to know which paragraph you're writing about now. And so I also want you to really be conscious of the coloring, the weaving of details about Eddie and the carpet fitter with Sabni and American Pepper. Really weave those together. Similarities and differences, weave the two texts together. If you were in Mrs. Smackin's class, you'd be writing four body paragraphs using the information from the previous lesson. But your teacher might have a better idea. 